Hello everyone. Welcome to Engineered Learnings. Engineered Learnings has been created as an effort to help and reach out to all the engineering students, aspirants and professionals out there with the basic understanding and the crux of the topics important for placements, vivas, semesters, competitive examinations and all types of interviews. So let's go to today's topic. Welcome everyone. Today we are going to discuss about uh, very common practice in industries, uh, the petrol and the diesel engines. Uh, very common questions do come from here. So we would uh, discuss the details uh, of the both the engines, not the detailed working, the entire mechanism of it, but a general overview definitely for the basic understanding of the two engines and the difference between the two engines. So first I would like to draw the petrol engine. So there is this petrol tank and petrol comes from here, petroleum. This gasoline comes from here. This is the air source. The air is being premixed here in a premixer. From there onwards, it moves into a valve. A pipeline, the inlet pipeline, containing a valve there. And this is my piston cylinder arrangement. The, the piston here. And the exit valve, the exit line fitted here, with a spark ignition fitted at this point. And this piston cylinder element is connected to the wheel which is connected to a crankshaft to another engine which also has a similar element with valve fitted into it and a spark ignition point. So, and definitely a part of it moving in through this, this acts as its inlet and this acts as the inlet of this. So this is in connection with this. So what happens is, when this piston goes down, this piston goes up and when this piston goes down, this piston goes up. Thus it is a continuous motion whenever this piston is going down, this is going up and the wheel as a result is moving. It is basically connected to a crankshaft but we are not going to go into the detailed mechanism of it but the basic understanding as we have already told. So what is happening here? Tank, gasoline is coming in, air is coming in, getting premixed in a premixer and the inlet valve is opening. During the downstroke, that is when the piston is coming down, it is creating a low pressure zone here and the petroleum, the gasoline and the air mixture is being dragged in, pulled in due to a low pressure zone created here. So it takes the place here. Once it takes the place here, this inlet valve behaves as a non-returning valve and it closes. So it, this remains closed after this inlet operation. During the upstroke, now when it suffers a downstroke, this suffers an upstroke. Now similar element, it has already got gasoline in it during the inlet stroke of it. So it has got a gasoline air mixture in it. As it suffers a downstroke and it has suffered a, a downstroke and it has suffered an upstroke, it creates pressure because this is closed. Now the inlet valve is closed, the outlet valve is already closed. It tries to create a pressure zone. The increase of pressure creating a compression gives rise to a high pressure, high temperature zone. As the temperature and the pressure increases, the spark is systemed to give an ignition spark at times at, at regular intervals rather I should say. So after every, supposedly after every one second, the spark ignites once. So this is designed as such, when this is suffering a downstroke and the gasoline is coming in, the gasoline is already present here, this is suffering an upstroke, creating pressure. When it is reaching here, a certain point that it reaches here, the spark ignites. As the spark ignites, this gasoline that is present as vapor is very important. Necessarily gasoline is present as vapor. That's why we use C5 and C6 which is easily vaporizable in gasoline engines. So everything here is in vapor form and as the spark ignites, the vapor easily catches fire. It explodes and this engine, this piston suffers a downfall or a downstroke. So as it comes for its second downstroke, this suffers an upstroke as we have already mentioned when this comes down this should go up and as it goes up 
it again creates pressure on the gasoline that is present here and the same mechanism offer, occurs after a certain time the spark ignites it explodes it comes down again it goes up in the returning stroke the flue gas that is being produced is driven out through this outlet valve during the entire operation the inlet and the outlet valve is closed the inlet only opens for inletting the gasoline air mixture vapor mixture into the cylinder during a low pressure zone and during a high pressure zone for letting the flue gas the outlet valve opens similar is the case here the outlet valve opens and it is in series so whenever this goes down this comes up and whenever this goes down this comes up and the process continues and the wind keeps on moving so you see this contains a spark ignition because of which the entire thing explodes and it catches fire the entire vapor mixture air vapor mixture catches fire and explodes creating a lot amount of energy which is being converted into mechanical energy and it is letting the wheel rotate so this is what is basically happening and the flue gas is being driven out the energy is again uh, recovered by using it in a wasted recovery boiler or something like that but that is the basic technology now when we talk about the diesel engine the diesel engine is similarly designed with some basic changes what are the changes this air is not premixed here but the air is present here in itself and the thing that is coming here since the c23 it is not vaporizable it is in the liquid form atomized atomized through the carburetor this is acting as the carburetor the carburetor's job is to vaporize the gasoline and send it in the vapor state and to atomize the diesel and send it in droplet state so whenever this is coming in the droplet state it is undergoing compression once again it is undergoing compression but there is no spark ignition it is an auto ignition ic engine that is internal combustion engine with an auto ignition engine for a diesel engine i'm saying this for a petroleum engine for a diesel engine if i draw a simple structure it would be something like this inlet valve outlet valve both of them closed i'm supposing that the fuel is already present both of them are closed both the valves are closed and there is no provision of spark ignition because spark can only be ignited to let the vapor catch fire but here it is diesel has droplets and with air mixed in it so what happens is it is compressed to such a level to such a level the compression ratio is 1 is to 14 to such a level that it undergoes auto ignition that is it exceeds the auto ignition temperature and pressure the compression ratio for a petrol engine is 1 is to 8 for a diesel engine it is 1 is to 14 so this answers the question that since there is a spark it can be easily ignitable but since auto ignition is occurring here so you need to compress it at a greater level to let that auto ignition take place moreover it is expected that C23 should have a low auto ignition temperature. Low auto ignition temperature. And C5, C6 should have a high auto ignition temperature. That is, it should not auto ignite easily. Whereas C23, we desire auto ignition. We desire auto ignition. And C5, C6, we do not desire auto ignition. We desire spark ignition. So this is the basic difference that one is atomized diesel, liquid. Another is vaporized gasoline or petrol, popularly known as. Vapor. Atomized and vaporized. One spark ignition doesn't occur, spark ignition occurs. Auto ignition occurs, auto ignition shouldn't occur, only spark ignition should occur. So, this is the basic difference of diesel and gasoline engine. One more thing is one is to 14 compression ratio, one is to 8 compression ratio because we need to press higher to. Uh, let auto ignition happen. So, a common question that is often asked in the placement season or the, in the interviews is why 
are petrol engine small cars, small taxis or uh, maybe bikes run on petrol, whereas lorries, trucks, they run on diesel. The answer lies here in the compression ratio as we can see, to undergo to ignition it has to have a compression ratio of 1 is to 14. To withstand that high pressure we need really really thick engine walls, okay? otherwise the gasket will burst, the engine walls will get affected. To have that thick engine walls we need to have a thick engine which can take load of that much compression ratio and that is only present in big engines, in heavy engines like truck or heavy engines in case of diesel. For bikes, cars can always go for petrol. But cars are developing these days which run on diesel as well. So these are the two basic mechanisms and these are the differences of diesel and petrol engine. Now question uh, that comes commonly in the interviews and the placement seasons, since you have understood the entire crux of the subject, and I hope that you have you will refer to some ETL lectures to further have a knowledge about it, some books also. So now the question that comes to our mind and often asked in the interviews is: if we mix some amount of diesel or kerosene or a higher cut into gasoline and transfer it to a IC spark ignition engine, that is the petrol engine, what will happen? And what will happen if we transfer some amount of gasoline or petrol in a diesel or auto ignition engine? In both the cases, the answer lies in the explanation. So we leave it to you. If you know the answer, just put a comment in the comment section explaining the entire answer. So if you like the video, press a like, comment, share and help us reach a greater audience. And uh, further subscribe, hit the bell icon if you want to have regular updates. That's it for today. Thank you.